All right, perfect. All okay. right, are we gonna? All right, and uh, guys, we're gonna go ahead and start my show as well. Whoever's listening on Terrell, so here we go. Recording in progress. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Josh and Jason Monday Christian and Conspiracy Podcast. I'm your host, Josh Monday. If you don't know me, I'm a Christian rapper, devoted husband, father, and army veteran. And um, today is going to be an amazing, amazing show. Uh, we're going to have a little debate on flat versus globe. And also, I would say geocentricity versus heliocentricity. Uh, you know, this is going to be a fun time. I have an amazing returning guest, uh, Terrell Croft. How are you doing today, Terrell? Great. Thanks for having me. I'm stoked. I'm definitely stoked too. And also, I want to tell everybody that's listening, I have a smoke alarm that is like bugging me and I and it's so high up, I cannot reach it. And uh, I'm having somebody come and fix that today. So everybody that listens to my show is going to tell me, fix that smoke alarm. I'm, I do apologize if you guys do hear that. I don't know if you will or not. But uh, I apologize ahead of time. So, all right. So first off, we're going to start out with um, uh, Terrell's 10-minute opener uh, on the, in this. And we're going to have a little debate. So I'm going to go ahead and start the stopwatch uh, as soon as he's ready. Let me know when you're ready, Terrell. Yeah, whenever you're ready. All right. And uh, ready, five, four, three, two, one. I will go ahead and start that time. Okay, very good. And thank you again for having me. For those who don't know me, I'm Terrell at Terrell03.com and also over here at Substack, terrell.substack.com, and I've written on this topic before, well, I, because of this here thingy, I lost my tabs, oh, here we go, I've written on this topic before, it, yeah, the Earth is a round rotating sphere, like all the stars and planets in the cosmos, it, with, so my argument is right here, you can see the, the, uh, if you just if you just duck duck go or Google my name, then you can come to this article. I'm also recording this myself, and so this video from my perspective is going to be uploaded to Brighteon and BitChute and Rumble and other places. Okay, so begin with God's Word. That's where all Scripture is inspired by God, beneficial for teaching, for rebuke, for correction, training in righteousness. So the man or woman of God may be fully capable and equipped for every good work. And then this is one of my favorites, Hebrews. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, even penetrating as far as the division of soul and spirit, of both joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. So my, my purpose here is, if you're unaware that I wrote the book, The Mystery Explained, helping you to see God's wisdom hidden in plain sight, spirit, blood, and water, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Heaven, Seven, and Earth, Man, Woman, Seed. Now, there are charts in the book. So I've, I'm from a family of ministers, and this is my life's work right here. You're looking at it more than Project Black Star, more than any other thing I've ever done. This is the thing that I'm most proud of, and this will be my legacy when I'm standing before the Lord God and, and being judged and such. So today we're debating this topic. And this thingy being at the top is causing me a little bit of issue, but that's okay. Let me see here. So there's many ways for me as a scientist, the, I'm running the Project Black Star investigation as a geologist, super plume dynamics and uh, mechanics inside the earth, magma wave rebound and such. And volcanism, and that's where my mind is a lot, running the Project Black Star investigation. Then in space, tracking the Black Star, using God, you know, using the birth pangs from First Thessalonians 5. The, the, the um, birth pangs as a woman with child, that's what's happening right now. So that's kind of my background. And the first place that I would begin is, well, just looking at the planets, the planets that are around us. And so here's a picture of Mercury. I mean, we have telescopes. We can look through the telescope and it shows a round rotating sphere. That's what I said. That's what I believe that the Earth is. And it's, it's not a coincidence that Mars is a round rotating sphere. And the reason it's a round rotating sphere is because of, well, laws of gravity and laws of economy. So whenever the solar system began, it began as a dust cloud, and then it condensed. And whatever the gravity well was shaped by the, where the highest concentration of density was, and everything began falling on itself down into that gravity well, and began rotating. 
depending on if it's in the northern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere of a solar system. So the same deal is with the Earth whenever a storm forms. For example, low pressure, it turns one way in the northern hemisphere and it turns the opposite way in the southern hemisphere. So you get the uh, particles, you get protons, neutrons, dust falling all together and then as it's rubbing on each other then it begins to heat up and it's rotating and down in the bottom of that gravity well you get a circling spiraling uh, mass if it has sufficient mass like our sun then it um here's um yeah that's mercury again if it has sufficient mass here's jupiter then it achieves ignition so a main sequence star like our sun has a life cycle of about 10 billion years and we're about halfway through that cycle right now our star is a likely a third generation star by the way so the a previous solar system had a sun it went supernova and then you had dust and then everything started up again and it's the reason that our solar system is younger than the larger universe which is estimated to be 20 billion years old and so our our local solar system is going to be younger than that so then law of economy is what causes the gravity well and then the ignition is because of sufficient mass if you don't have sufficient mass you wind up with a white dwarf star that transitions into a brown dwarf star that transitions into a black dwarf star with enough time whoa my apologies for that this thing's on autopilot and so well I think you get the idea when we look through a telescope we see round spiraling spheres all of the terrestrial planets on the inner part of our solar system they rotate in the same direction and they move around the Sun in the same direction with the exception of well all of them go in the same direction which is called prograde they're moving all in the same direction Venus is the oddball it rotates has a retrograde orbital rotation it actually rotates backwards very very slowly and the reason for that is the black star the black star's perihelion position nearest the Sun is very near Venus orbit path which means it crosses Earth orbit path twice and whenever the Venus is in the wrong place at the wrong time it interacts with the gravity well of that black star it's set in a deep v-shaped gravity well and it changes its orbital rotation so Venus is just unlucky it's in the wrong place at the wrong time our planet is also unlucky because we have a destruction cycle if you go back and look at history about every 12,500 years that's about every third or fourth black star orbit cycle that the earth gets tipped over and we have evidence of mammoths that have grass in their stomach they just ate it and they were frozen solid how'd that happen geological pole shift so there's plenty of evidence if you go to pole shift ning.com I believe that's Nancy Leader's website and look at the pole shift then there's plenty of evidence that the earth has been tipped over in previous orbit cycles and that's what I'm doing now running the project black star investigation tracking the black star it's uh, between the Sun and the Scorpio constellation so if we go back over here to my website come down the page you'll see there's a black star section right here and there is a black star event timeline the nearest proximity to the black star is going to be June 3rd 2024 the recent earthquake that struck on the backside alignment took place on December 2nd 2023 at 1400 hours UTC it was predicted in advance to the second half of the day on December 2nd 2023 months in advance because the near side alignment quake happened and I was able to count the number of seconds between these events to know precisely whenever that quake was going to strike and it struck when it was exactly when it was supposed to also whenever it struck cut a big hole in the earth in the Philippines the Philippines was approaching the black star Sun center line and at the same time that that happened a giant hole was created in the Sun straight through on the black star Sun center line that's caused by the black star Sun and the earth coming into alignment solar system harmonics and electric universe model and what happened was a gigantic sprite right from the black star through the Sun through the earth that happened at the alignment that was predicted so counting the number of seconds it allowed me to know this time it's gonna be about 200 UTC about two o'clock 
in the morning UTC on June the 3rd is whenever we're going to be in nearest proximity to the black star. And if we're close enough to it, if it's close enough in, then it's going to tip our planet over and cause, well, what Paul says, the destruction is going to come suddenly, like the birth pangs upon a woman with child, and they will not escape. So Paul predicts it. This is the same black star that caused the earth changes in the days of Moses. It's the same black star that caused the flood in the days of, Moses, of Noah. So it comes again. It's going to come again at the end of the age. See, we're witnesses of how the day of the Lord is about to begin. At the end of the age, that destruction pattern is going to happen again. Joel 2, Christ in Matthew 24, Revelation, Wormwood, all of that happens when the black star comes on the next black star orbit cycle in about 3,600 years. So we're witnesses of how the day of the Lord is about to start. Just like the Apostle Paul says, so all the prophets know how the day of the Lord ends. God never showed them how the day of the Lord begins until the Apostle Paul. God had to keep that hidden in himself, like our gospel, our mystery church, our mystery translation to immortality, 1 Corinthians 15, start at 51, 1 Thessalonians 4, start at 13. So only Paul was given that, and it's all connected to the mystery. The mystery means it was hidden in God and revealed at a proper time. After Christ was raised from the dead was that proper time. Paul is a steward of this dispensation of God's grace, like Moses was a steward over Israel. So he's so the, the slave we're, appointed. We're coming to, up on the we're on the ten minute the ten minute mark. Just letting you know, brother. Okay, so okay, that's my case, and I'm um, just trying to show you. I do have background in the science. I do have background in the scripture. I think I'm pretty good to to. Uh, oh, one last thing, if you don't, if you'll let me. This is the guy right oh. here. Yeah, it's open. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, he's uh, he's the guy that proved more than two thousand years ago using math and sticks and the solstice, knowing the measurement of sticks, he was able to determine the circumference of the Earth very, very near to what the actual number is. Back in then, he did that with the shadows of the Earth on a particular day. So this has been debated for centuries, and the Greeks actually figured it out more than two thousand years ago. Okay, brother, that that's my case. All right, so that that's a great intro. I appreciate it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start my time now. And uh, all right, guys. So I just want to let you guys know. Whenever we go and talk about biology, you know, like uh, evolution according to the Bible, some people have no problem with it. Um, if I talk about the Big Bang isn't true, uh, you know, the Bible says 6,600 years. People have no problem with it. Psychology. Sometimes you could say, isn't it? You know, it might be demons affecting people. You know, most people have no problem with it. But as soon as I get into cosmology or what the Bible says people flip out. So it gets really interesting, you know, and not saying Terrell would do that, but you know, people do. Um, what's the fruit of the Big Bang uh, evolution and heliocentric uh, centricity? Uh, we have atheism. That is one of the main fruits of the, you know, we see a lot of people, it's not bringing people closer to God, maybe in Terrell's case, yes, but a lot of people that, are, that, that end up studying this stuff, it ends up bringing them further away from God. When it comes to uh, flat earth from a biblical perspective, biblical cosmology, it's taking atheists and turning them into believers because they're believing that God is now closer. So I think that's really interesting. Um, I want to start out letting you know that heliocentricity is what it's called, right? And helios is a Greek sun god. So heliocentric means that it's a sun god centric solar system and soul is also a god so it's pretty interesting that they want to put helios in the middle have the sun god in the middle copernicus he also said that there is a beautiful sun enthroned in a temple so they like to have sun worship ever since babylon right so it gets really interesting there um i want to let you guys know go over some bible verses before we get into it so we have uh romans 10 17 so faith cometh by hearing uh by hearing the word of god okay so uh, what kind of faith is being produced if I'm telling you what the Word of God says and reading it to you and you are not believing it? You know, we have to make sure that we pay attention to that. Hebrews 11, 6, and without faith, it is impossible to please God. So if you're not building faith by hearing the Word of God, then it is impossible to please God. Okay, I want to let you guys know that. And he invoked it as well. I'll invoke it too. Uh, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness, for the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Okay, 2 Timothy 3.16. I believe that all scripture is inspired by God. So if scripture says it, then that's what it is. Okay, we don't take Genesis or anything in the Bible and place it in an allegorical section because it does not uh, agree with the science today. 
I don't believe we should do that. I don't believe we can do that because uh, First Titus one says that uh, you know our fight, First Titus one two says that God cannot lie. So if God is inspiring these men to write the Bible, then we got to know that God cannot lie. Also, when I go over Genesis, we need to realize something. First of all, Jesus says this. For this is John 5 46. For if you believe Moses, you would believe me. For if he wrote about me, but if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? Okay, so if you don't believe Moses, how are you going to believe Jesus? Also, Numbers 12, 4, verse, uh, you know, 4 through 8, uh, the Lord spoke suddenly unto Moses and unto Aaron and Miriam, Come out ye unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And the and, and the three came out, and the Lord came down in the pillar of the cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam. And they both came forth. And he said, hear my words. Now, or hear now my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto in a vision and will speak unto them in a dream. But my servant Moses, I speak to him. Uh, he says, is not so who is faithful in all mine house. With him, I will speak mouth to mouth. Uh, if you, if you, uh, uh, listen to the New King James Version, it says face to face. So Moses spoke to God mouth to mouth and face to face on Mount Sinai. Okay, so we need to understand that because uh, when I go over Genesis, uh, you know, that is he, he, he that's a first hand account from the Most High, the first hand account from God. So if I'm going through Genesis and all of a sudden it conflates with the, you know, the, 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 the science of today. Then we need to understand that the science of today is not correct. The book of Genesis is correct. The book of Job, Psalms, everything in, in the Bible is correct compared to anything you learn in science today. Because first of all, all those people don't have a firsthand account from God like Moses had. They're not, they're not having God come to them in visions and in dreams like the prophets of old, or the or you know, or Jesus actually being on the earth too. He speaks himself that that kind of goes along with what I'm going to speak about too. So all right, so uh, the Bible has been proven to stand the test of time. Uh, science changes like underwear, okay? So we need to understand that, you know, that's, um, and the only, I'll tell you guys, the only Bible verse, the only Bible verse that is going to go with what um, what Terrell just presented or any of these scientists of today present um, is going to be not in our Bible. It'll be in the false prophet Joseph Smith's Bible. It's going to be Helaman 1215. It reads, according to his word, the earth goeth back and it appeareth unto man that the sun standeth still. Yeah, and behold, this is so. And he surely it is that the earth that moveth and not the sun. Okay, that is not what I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with the Bible. Okay, so um, we're going to go ahead and uh, in Romans 3, 4. Also, God forbid, yeah, let God be true and every man a liar as it is written. That's what I'm going to also uh, talk about because we let God be true, every man a liar. When people come to you, especially uh, scientists, and I'm not saying that every scientist is bad or every scientist is atheist, but most of the scientists that are pushing this stuff, like big time, like the astrology, the astrophysicists, the people that you see on TV, all these people, NASA, uh, you know, if, if you look up the word NASA, actually in Hebrew, it's actually uh, beguiled, which is really interesting. But anyways, so... Um, or actually in English, NASA in Hebrew is. So anyway, so we have that. Um, we kind of already went over Moses already. So uh, we can kind of get into uh, stuff real quick. We have uh, man's cosmology versus God's cosmology. Okay, so Genesis 1 is in the beginning. Elohim created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Day one, it says heavens and earth and also light was created. Day two, God created the firmament. And it says the firmament separated the waters from the waters and God called the firmament heaven. Understand that. Um, I'll go into the firmament a little bit, but day three, the oceans and dry land and plants and vegetation were created. And then it wasn't until day four that God created the moon, sun, and the stars also. Um, if you listen to anybody that talks about the Big Bang, uh, evolution or anything like that, what they're going to say is that the stars came first, then the sun, then the earth. That is an inverted creation because God says that the earth came first. And then on day four, he created the moon, sun, and the stars also. You guys understand that? 
And he also created a firmament, which if you look up the word, it's rakia, it's solid. And it's expanse, but you can see it in parentheses. And um, if you look at the Strong's Concordance, it's an extended base support. What is it supporting? Supporting the waters above. It also says in there that the Hebrews believe that there was waters above and that the, that the, that the uh, firmament is solid. If you look into a lot of verses, it talks about the sky being strong, about the sky being solid. Okay, we need to understand that. And, the, and firmament is not softament. It's not gases it's not atmosphere because god put the firmament he put the moon sun and the stars in the firmament on day four okay and also there's a greater light to rule the day lesser light to rule the night and th that's made for you know the stars and the sun and the moon are made for signs for seasons and it's made to light up the earth okay it's not made to light up all these different galaxies and uh, we got to understand that. So God made these things to light up the earth. It says it in the Bible. Okay. So now we're, uh, we're down here. So um, I think another thing we need to talk about is, is going to be that there's a fixed earth. Okay. A fixed earth. So we have Zechariah 1 11, and they answered the angel of the Lord and stood among the myrtle trees and said, we had walked to and fro through the earth, and behold, all the earth sitteth still and is at rest. First Chronicles 16, 30 says, Tremble before him all the earth. The word is also firmly established. It shall not be moved. Psalms 93, 1, the Lord reigns. He is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed, and he has girded himself with strength. Surely the world is established, so it cannot be moved. Psalms 104, 5, you who laid the foundations of the earth so that it shall not be moved uh, forever. He sat, um, Psalms 104.5, kind of went over that. Isaiah 45.18, uh, he has made the earth and fastened it and fixed himself fast. Hold on, guys, I need to bring this timer back up so I don't go over, okay? And then, um, uh, yeah, so we have that. And uh, science experiments that back up the fixed earth, stationary earth. Well, they tried to, uh, they tried to do experiments on the orbit of the earth and they had failed experience. 1871, George Aries attempt to prove the movement of the earth and ended up being known as the Aries failure. 1881, uh, Albert Michelson uh, experiment failed to show any movement of the earth. Michelson Morley experiment failed to show any movement of the earth despite vigorous efforts with a very precise measurement. 1903, Troughton and Noble experiments failed. Uh, 1904, Rayleigh and Brace experiments failed. And 1913, uh, George Sagnac attempted without success to demonstrate the movement of the earth through space. So not only does the Bible say that we have a fixed, immovable earth, uh, Genesis uh, 1 through, uh, you know, the, the days, 1, 2, 3, we had the earth first and then the sun after. So what was the, what was the sun or the earth orbiting uh, on day three? Nothing. So, okay, we have, uh, I'm just at the exact amount of time that I gave you. So I'll go ahead and stop that really quick and we'll go ahead and go with, and, with our discussion. Okay. So since Jason's not here to question us both on what we just said, <laughs> then I suppose you said, what, I'm the visiting, well, visiting team. So you should ask me a question to kind of try to pick apart mine and then I'll t ask a question of yours. Um, well, if, like I said, if you want to start, we could start out with the thing that you emailed me. I think you, that was kind of interesting. You emailed me that about the time zones. Uh, we could start out with that if you want. Oh, okay. Um, first, can I make a couple of points on what you just said? I wrote down a few notes here. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Okay. So, um, you were comparing the, the earth centric versus the sun centric two theories and, I think you inferred that mine was the heliocentric model. I don't know if that's true or not, but neither of those are true. The truth is that we're on the in the Sagittarian arm, our solar systems in the Sagittarian arm. We're actually going around the Milky Way center, which is a gigantic black hole. And ours is just one galaxy. And Alpha Centauri is our, our ne nearest um, uh, solar system to us. In the arm and so we are just one galaxy of lots and lots and lots of galaxies that are out there in this cosmos that we're inside to give you an example a sun burns out in our our milky way galaxy very rarely very very rarely does one go supernova i mean it can be another million years before it happens again but we're shattered we we're rained on by gamma ray bursts from other galaxies 
where the suns are exploding, gamma ray bursts, they happen about every 18 to 24 hours because there are so many of them. To give you an idea of how many of the other galaxies that are out there. So we're talking about gigantic universe <laughs> that we're inside. Yeah. Okay? okay. And then God's word must be interpreted. So just saying this is what God says, well, there are 20,000 denominations of professing Christians. And, I understand that. Okay, it's, so but, you've got your okay, interpretation, so, everybody's got theirs, so whose do we take to decide if there's sci if it's uh, round or flat? My view is, I know a lot about God's word, my view is accepting my interpretation to conclude on the anatomy of our universe, I think that's, um, I think we need science for that. So God's word is good for something. It's good for doctrine. It's good for edification. It's good for spiritual growth. Okay. And, it's, an, and, it's, so, and, it's, and it's not so good for some things. Okay. You're like so, determining if the earth is round, in my okay. opinion. <laughs> well, okay. we got to understand that uh, all scripture is inspired by God, right? So when God talks about, you know, in Genesis, when he's, when Moses is speaking about that, that is a firsthand account from God on how it is created. So if God cannot lie, all scriptures inspired by God, the Hebrews believe that the earth was flat with the dome, moon, sun, and the stars in the firmament, the sun moving. Okay. It actually says in uh, Psalms 19, uh, verse one through six, it says the glory of God, you know, it's for the heavens. And it also says that the firmament show with this handiwork. So handiwork means God's achievement. So the firmament is actually God's achievement. If you deny there being a uh, a dome or a firmament, which is what the Strong's Concordance says it is, then you're actually denying God's achievement. So understand this. So also you talked about, uh, so you're invoking the Big Bang, you're invoking evolution and you're invoking all that and not going with what God says. I mean, I mean, come on, evolution compared to what God's word says, uh, we come after our own kind. So I don't, well, this is not an evolution debate, but we can get into that. But if you're invoking the Big Bang Theory versus God, I mean, if, if you think that it happened 6,600 years ago, the Big Bang, and that's the way you think God created the, the, the heavens and the earth and everything, so then, you know, that's that's your interpretation, and I'm fine with you thinking that. No, no, but, no, um, no, no, no. That, that's a straw man argument. I never said that, as a matter of fact. Oh, no, I know, I know. I know you didn't say that. I'm saying if you did, if you no. did. I didn't say that as you, you were did speaking, invoke it or not. As you were speaking, I have my article up on Substack, The Big Bang Theory of Creation is a Myth. It is a myth. It okay. is not true. I appreciate that. Okay, I just I just thought that I just heard when you were talking in your argument in the very beginning, you were talking about how we started out as a mist and everything came together and gravity, you know, gravity is like the gravity to me is like scientists is God, you know, that's their G. That's what the whole entire universe depends on, you know, and, and you know, we're actually 95% wrong when it comes to that, right? It says, uh, you're, you're, you know, Michu Kaku says we're 95% wrong. That's uh, 10 to the 26 power. That's one with 26 zeros after it. So that's why it, for me, when I'm debating science, I like to go back to the word of God because it's the only infallible truth that we have. These scientists are giving you theory after theory after theory, and then they keep on taking a Band-Aid and placing on that theory because this one didn't work and this one didn't work. Like, for example, I invoked in the beginning about these experiments that they did, and they, the, the Earth is not rotating according to these experiments, but they still want to come in and bring Albert Einstein later to put a Band-Aid on that and say special relativity because – because they cannot prove from the earth that the earth is rotating or orbiting. Okay. So I think it gets, or actually the orbit of the earth. That's what they're testing. They're not testing the, the spinning of the earth. So uh, it's, it gets interesting though, but I'll let you keep going. I don't want to uh, take okay. too much of the time. Well, it's pretty obvious that we're rotating because the same constellation, all of us on the whole planet, we see the same constellation at night, straight up in the air at midnight. All of us do. So, and that was the point about the sunrise and sunset. You see, the sun has been up since before we started this interview here. But I'm, let me see, you're at uh, 5.30. The sun's not up yet where you are. It's going to come up at at 6.53, okay? 6.52, 6.51. There's a little bit of variance because we're different distances from the equator. But guess when the sun comes up in New Delhi, India? 6.53, okay? San Francisco, 6.52. Here in Arkansas, Harrison, 6.51. Local time. If you go to the local times all around the planet, 24 time zones, at the equator, those time zones are 1,000 miles because the Earth is 25,000 miles around. We're rotating, and we I came into the light of the sun two hours before you did because you are 2,000 miles to my west. So that is just the reality. You can call it science or whatever you want, but that's the reality, and then... Tomorrow at the same time, then the sun's going to come up 
except for because of our different angle as we're going around the sun. See, the fact that the days are now getting longer is because we're at 23 and a half degrees and we're moving around the sun. So in the summertime, the northern hemisphere is pointing away from the sun. In the wintertime, we're pointing toward the sun. We have a half helium position, July the 4th, furthest from the sun, and we have a perihelion position nearest the sun, January 2nd. And we're, we're actually pointing toward the sun. The northern hemisphere is lucky because in, in the, the wintertime, winter we're pointing toward the sun and the southern <laughs> hemisphere is away. So they they are unlucky right. in the southern hemisphere. So anyway, the su the science, you can call it science, but it's my understanding. And okay. it's a perfect model. So, it all works. Like using the uh, flashlight okay. and the globe, it all, all works. So I don't have to add anything or take anything from it. Okay, so, so if you want to address the time zone thing, how, how do you explain yeah, the time uh -huh. zones, 24 of them and... Okay, so there's not 24 of them. First of all, there's actually going to be 38. Okay, there's not 24 uh, perfect time zones. There's actually 38. There's uh, 24 basic. There's 11 special, and there's four bonus. So there's actually more in the in the south than there is in the north. So that's interesting because on a flat Earth, there's more land in the center than there is on the outside. But um, also, uh, it, and it's not perfect. But when you talk about you, you told me in your in your email. I don't know if you want to invoke it here on the on here that you could take a flashlight and move the globe that you have in your house. Uh, do you want to, I don't know if you want to invoke that, that, that theory, but what we're missing here is that the earth is not just supposedly spinning a thousand miles an hour. It's also orbiting the sun at 66,600 miles an hour. And it's also chasing the sun at 525,000 miles an hour. So I think you invoke stars there as well. Like we're seeing the same stars. Uh, I would have to ask you the same question. Why are we saying the same stars if we're moving 66,600 miles an hour and also chasing the sun at 525,000 miles an hour? Some people, uh, if you look at some scientists, they say 440,000 miles an hour. And those stars are supposedly uh, light years away, like what? 24 trillion light years is the is the closest star. So I think it gets really interesting. But uh, if you try to invoke that thing where you're moving like that, you'd actually have to do a lot of different stuff. You'd, uh, you'd have to understand that we're not actually a sphere. They say that we're an oblique spheroid. So that's going to change what you're talking about. And also, um, if I go into a flat earth, and you take a local sun and you move it, you, you, we can we can take whatever that globe and you flatten it out and it's fixed and stationary and you have a local sun, it can do the same exact thing that you're talking about. If you if you look at the uh, Dave, Dave Weiss's uh, Flat Earth, Moon and Zodiac app, Sun and Z Moon and Zodiac app, it actually shows you the exact time and exactly where the sun would be, exactly where the moon would be uh, if you had a flat Earth Mercator map. So I think that's interesting. And um, as I was talking about in the Bible, it talks about the sun moving, uh, the earth being fixed and immovable, and the moon moving, okay? And if you go outside, that's what we observe. The sun moves because in Joshua 10, uh, you know, 10 uh, through 12, uh, Joshua says, uh, moon stand still in the valley of Ajan and, and moon stand still. Okay, so we have the sun and the moon standing still. Not the earth stopping and at and stopping going 66,600 miles an hour and the sun stopping going 525,000 miles an hour and the moon stopping going faster than a bullet. OK, so we need to understand that. And also in Psalms 19, it says that the, the sun does a circuit in the heavens. So it's doing a circuit. If you look up the word circuit, that means circle in the heavens. And it, it's like a strong man that runs a race. And it also has a tabernacle, which is a tent. And if you look up what the tents were back then, they were dome shaped. And it actually says in the heaven. And uh, if you go to Genesis 1 6, what does God call the firmament? Heaven. That's one of the heavens. One of the heavens is where the moon, sun, and the stars are located. Second heaven is the firmament. Third heaven is where God's throne is located. But go ahead. I don't want to take too much That's of time. That's Genesis 1 8, actually. But um, I have the map pulled up. There are 24 time zones. That now, different countries, it's broken into different. They do different things in different countries like China. I'm looking at they've got one big deal. But anyway, there are 24 of them. I'm there's looking right though. There's, there's 38 though, but I'm just, no, I'm just there's, not, you know there's not 38. There's 24. But okay. th because of the way that these different countries do it, then I can see how you interpret that. But if you just look it up, you can you guys can look it up for yourself. OK, so um, I keep <laughs> okay. going back to every word of God has to be interpreted. And what we're okay. hearing is your interpretation. One of what? of twenty thousand. I'm I'm but, not going to try to use which verse. Guys. Which verse? You tell me which verse that that I'm just interpreting. All I'm doing, I'm reading it like a fifth grader could read it. Like you need to come to the Word of God like a child. You need to come to God like a child. You could oh, read. No, God is Joshua. not a child. His Word. No, 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 no. Is I, extremely I'm just complicated. Okay, I, I understand. Is, but it is multidimensional. It's living. Joshua and it's ten. 
verses, okay, Josh 10, Joshua 10 through 12. I could read the verse for you. It says that the moon, the sun stopped in one geographical location mm -hmm. and the moon stopped. That is not my interpretation. That's me reading it okay. word for I, word. I, I, can it answer, I can answer that. Okay, number one, everything you're reading is 100% true from the perspective of the observer standing mm, on the interesting. earth. Okay. And the next thing is you're speaking about a time when the black star was moving in the inner solar system. That's the reason the earth, those things happened just like in the days of the flood and the days of Noah. So the, the black star comes. The thing is the earth isn't always in the same place in the solar system when the black star crosses earth orbit path between the sun and Scorpio. So you have an opportunity for a geological pole shift if you're in the wrong place at the wrong time or a global flood or the earth to stop. You have these different variables that can happen depending on where Earth is, the Sun is, and the Black Star is. So that makes 100% okay. perfect one sense. One moment, real quick. Off the, off the top. Okay, so you're one of you, one of the uh, you know Neil Tyson DeGrasse says that if the Earth stopped, and this is one of your scientists because you like to go to scientists, if the Earth stopped, everybody on Earth would fly off the Earth. Okay, that's the first thing. Second thing is if you look at Joshua, it does say. Okay, I'm going to read the verse. Then spoke Joshua to the Lord in the day that uh, the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Sun, stand still, uh, thou, thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Ajan. The sun stood still and the moon stayed still until the people have avenged themselves upon their enemies. It is, is it not written in the book of Jasher? And if you guys go to the book of Jasher, it does say that. If you want two witnesses, we have Habakkuk 3.11. The sun and moon stood still in their hands at the light until thine arrows they went and the shining of thy glittering spear it also says in joshua that that never happened again so it, the black star thing there's there's the black star thing that you're, you're talking about and if you think the earth stood still there's a few things that would have had to happen which i think god can do miracles i understand but if the bible says and god inspired the bible god inspired and god cannot lie he's not going to tell you that the sun and moon stood still in two ge geographical locations because then that would be a lie. Titus 1, 2. God cannot lie. Okay, so no, we have that. And also the sun, the sun also moved backwards 10 degrees in the book of Isaiah 38, 7. I don't want to, uh, I don't want to take the time. I want to give you a time to respond. Okay, again, everything is true 100% from the perspective of the observer. So when the earth stops, and you, you were citing scientists, the thing to realize about scientists is they're like Pharisees and Sadducees. You have People that, that do not believe in black holes, right? If, if they accept the electric universe model, which is also true, but that's where they run to when they can't accept black holes. And then you have people on the other side that do. And so just like the Pharisees and the Sadducees, some believe in the resurrection, some don't. So there's a spectrum of them. So you, it's impossible to throw any scientist in with all the others. So where are you on that spectrum, you see? And I don't agree with most of them. Relativity and quantum physics do not reconcile. They do not because the universe is broken. I understand that. So our physical universe is like a woman. The heaven that you're, you're is the firmament is heaven. Okay, that's okay. where is it solid. Is it solid and firm? It's a realm like this realm. It, the thing is that relativity and quantum reconcile there, but they don't in the heavens either with the, the abode of the angels. So there's three abodes here. Just like a man has a spirit, soul, and a body, heaven is the soul part where relativity and quantum physics do reconcile. They don't reconcile perfectly, but they will. There's a new heaven and new earth, right? Revelation 21. Um, yeah. Verse, start, verse 1, there's a new heaven and new earth. Every time the earth is remade for each age that's coming, then quantum and, and, and uh, relativity will reconcile better and better and better. But in the earth, it's like if you're trying to c characterize this earth, describe this earth, and reality it's like just trying to define the family by only describing the woman now that's i understand that most scientists do not and so they're trying to look at the woman and say this is what the family is and it's just never going to work until they realize the universe is broken okay so that, that so please don't throw me in with okay. all the other scientists that are oh, no, out no, no, there no. and then not, um not. i can see that you like to run back to scripture and use your interpretations and, and for me again that's not the way to define our universe so you do that first by observation you just look that look through the how do you explain the the mars rotating sphere how do you explain looking okay. just looking through I'll, a telescope I'll, this is I'll, not nasa or anything it's just anybody looking through see, a telescope you don't see it. well okay. first of all you don't see it rotating like in a circle what you what you're gonna see 
if you look at it, if you look at it through a P1000 camera or a telescope, it looks like lights. That's what it looks like. Luminaries, just like the Bible. If you go to the Bible and, and, and read it, if everything is a circle or a sphere in, in, in the heavens, okay, then that, that does not mean that the earth is a sphere. The reason why is because the, the earth would be flat. There would be a dome, right? And the moon, sun, and the stars are in the dome. So that would not be a problem. You're showing this right now, but this is all. This is not exactly what it looks like. This is CGI. Also, if you think that they went to this thing and, and, they, and they, they took a picture of it and videoed it, how fast is Jupiter orbiting? 28,000 miles an hour. So do you think they're going to be able to sit out there and just be like, Look at this thing orbit. This is beautiful. But anyways, I want to talk about the firmament, man, because this okay. is very important. Uh, the Hebrew cosmology is there's a, a dome. If you go to the CJB, that's what they say. Instead of firmament, they use dome. Is a dome over the earth, the earth being flat, shield, which is hell, being in the earth. And you have the moon, sun, and the stars in the firmament. And above that is waters, just like Genesis 1.6 talks about, and then God's throne is above that, just like Ezekiel 1.26 says, just like Ezekiel 10.1 says, just like Amos 9.6 says, just like Isaiah 40.22 says, it is he who sitteth upon the circle of the earth. You know what he's doing? He's sitting upon, you know, there's going to be waters, crystalline firmament, it seems like, waters below, and then the actual firmament, right? So we have the firmament in, in the Hebrew, Strong's Concordance, Rakia says, extended surface, solid, Expanse base, but in parentheses, expanse flat as base support, uh, firmament, a vault of head and supporting the waters above. Okay, we have that. Um, Job 37 18. Hast thou him spread out the sky, which is strong as molten looking glass? Uh, we have that. We have um, the word spread is strong, beat out, spread out. All right, we have that. And then um, Proverbs 8. Uh, 27 through 29 also says that the he it is he who made the skies firm above which is solid all right we have that um also we have um and in the strong concordance if you look up the word strong it's solid it's strong it's strengthened secure it's hardened okay make firm um and and what's interesting is you brought up revelation when there's a new heaven and new earth the reason why they have to create a new heaven and new earth is because there's, there's earth with the firmament, water above, and God's throne above that. So it's connected, okay? It is connected. Amos 9, 6 says that is he who walks in the vault of heavens, and, and he put his vaulted dome over the earth in the in the, in the the Amos 9, 6 um, NASB. Vaulted dome, it is what binds heaven to the earth. The firmament connects heaven to the earth. The reason why they have to make a new heaven and new earth is because it is connected. That is why, but go ahead. Okay. So my next question, because I really want to understand your perspective on this, because you say that the world is flat and that it's under a dome. Yep. Okay. I do. So that's God. God's word says that, and that's not well, just my my interpretation. Oh, I, yeah. From my view, that's your that's your interpretation of God's word. So if it's flat, then how is it that people fly around the world in an airplane? They go from they start in uh, New York and they go all the way around and they come back again. Okay. In, in a flat Earth, uh, like one side to the other is pretty far away from each other, and you okay, wouldn't so, be able to go to you wouldn't be able to go around the world on the. Is it is there just populated on one side of your flat Earth? No, or no, no, it, no, no, no. Listen, is, is it okay. like a coin if, if you, where there's if, two sides? What is the, what is the, what did you invoke? You said airplane, right? So we have to keep nosing down, nosing down to correct for the curvature of the earth. They don't do that. They fly over a, a plane. That's why it's called the airplane. But if you look at what it was, it, it's basically uh, like the Bible talks about the circle of the earth. That is not a sphere. You know, if you go back, you can check out the strong concordance. It means circle. So the circle of the earth and he, basically it's it's like Antarctica would be around the outside. If you look up the Mercator map, you, you could see what 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 they invoke. I'm not saying that that's my model. My model is biblical cosmology, but it's a good one to look at if you want to see. And uh, you could fly around the flat earth as well. You know, you don't you don't. It's not like you have to fly around a globe for you to fly. You could fly on a plane and you could fly from uh, California to New York. No problem on a flat earth. And that's what it seems like they do because they're not nosing down every five minutes. They should be nosing down because they have to go with the curvature of the sky and the curvature of the earth. Um, if you want to talk about the earth instead of the sky, we could we could talk about that. You know, there's uh uh, you know, there's curvature calculator. Uh, basically, every one mile is eight inches squared. And if you could find me curvature, I would be I would be su surprised because 
Uh, there's people that do long distance photography, uh, 260 miles where they're able to see a mountain, which should not be available. Also, if you look at, um, there's a thing called the Black Swan. It's about nine miles away uh, on the water and they're able to see it. If you take the curvature cal calculator and uh, it, it, there's, there's no possible way you'd be able to see that oil rig. Um, I, I, I wish I had a presentation to pull that up. Um, you know, and show you if, if you have Google, you could pull it up, just put black swan picture and I could show you, okay. but I'm not the one taking these. I'm not the one taking these. So I don't like to invoke these in a debate because I'm not taking these and you know, I'm not, I'm not uh, the one that's actually doing these experiments. So I don't like to bring those up, you know? Okay. Do you have an actual picture of your flat earth that we can look? have a, because like I'm well, showing there's the globe. no picture of yours either. There's no picture oh, yeah. of your globe either. No, no, no. Those those are actually called they're, they're actually they take strips of data and they place them together. And that's actually admitted by NASA. And, and no, if you want to invoke no, the one on the moon, NASA. then you got to prove forget the, NASA. the moon landing I mean, first. I mean, it's like 2000 years ago they proved that. Oh, no, rose. that's Aristotle. That's Aristotle that, that proved that he took two sticks. Right. Okay. And he placed them. So those right there. That would work on a flat earth too if you took the sun and you make it local instead of having it 93 million miles away. And Aristophanes actually thought that the sun was 3 million miles away. So if you're trying to say that he invoked it and he got it correct, he would have to, he would actually be off on his, on his calculations because 93 million miles away is a lot different than 3 million miles away. Okay, so this is my model. This is the earth rotating on this. its axis. Well, they say I don't have one. I have one. It's right here. Okay. We no, have, no, no. we have satellites. I, no, no, no. I never can... said you didn't have a model. I said, I don't, I don't have an actual model. I don't like to use a model from flat earth because I'm not a thousand percent that that's real. And I like to talk about biblical cosmology. So I'm not going to just invoke somebody's model. Well, and that's... even your model is not correct either. Honestly, it's all abstract then. So we're going to have to take your word for it. I'm going to see the evidence. So, Here's my problem. I'm looking at this flat Earth, and I'm having to visualize it because you can't show me anything. But if it's flat, then from one end, show you. from mean, one into the other of your flat Earth is really far. One into the other, and I have to get on a plane. Say Australia's on one end, and you say um, the United States is on the other. Okay, so it's pretty far away to go from one end to the other. And so, what is I'm real curious on what's what nation, what continent is on one end of your flat Earth, and what continent is on the other, because whatever's on the very ends are very very far away, and everything in the middle is closer. Okay, now on a round Earth it doesn't work that way. So you're you're on the on opposite of me is India here in the middle part of the United States. So, I know. So I know. whether I go west or east, it's the same distance on a round planet, but on a flat Earth, it's not. It's one distance. It goes right. from me. Oh, it goes straight over to India, and that's, and at some point on a flat Earth, you have to get to the edge. You yeah, know, like, like you a, do. Like and we're not allowed to go there. They, like they don't Douglas Hall. To go there. It's called it's called the Antarctic Treaty. They do not allow us to go there after, um, after they did Operation High Jump. You know, with Admiral Byrd, uh, he went there, and it was like between 1956, 1958. He did Operation High Jump, where he went to explore Alaska. I mean, Alaska. I'm sorry, Antarctica. That's right. And after that. He came back, right? And he and he and his brother, who was the senator, they invoked the Antarctic Treaty. He also said that he found land as big as the United States past Antarctica, which I think that's kind of interesting. And uh, he said that on the news. He said, guys, there's land with untouched resources past Antarctica as big as the United States. And it's forest, not ice. And uh, we've never heard of that land. I think that's interesting. But um, uh, after that, that's what happened. He came back and then they did uh, Operation uh, Deep Freeze. To check it out even more. And uh, in, in the 1958 encyclopedia, which I thought was interesting, they said they found a dome, but then they take it out of the encyclopedia. So I thought that was interesting. And also, uh, then you have in 1962, they did something called uh, Operation Dominique. I don't know if you ever heard of that, but Operation Dominique is where they took missiles, uh, like Thor missiles, because these guys are always doing stuff like that. Thor missiles. And they're trying to blow up Dominic, are, are they're trying to blow up, it's called Operation Fishbowl is the smaller operation. Operation Fishbowl, if you think about what a fishbowl is, it's flat land with a dome and a hole on top. So they took missiles and they blew up, they tried to blow up what I believe is the firmament to see how high the firmament goes because they need to shoot missiles at each other and they don't want to waste the missile by hitting the firmament. I don't know how high the firmament is, but if you look at that, Dominique actually means belonging to the Lord in Latin and then Chama means fixed shell. So Dominique Chama is one of the missions that they did. And also if you look up Operation Fishbowl, which happened in 1962, after that you start seeing them invoke NASA, 
You can see them invoke all these, you know, different space missions where they say they went to the moon and all that. I don't, this is not a, a debate on the moon landing. That's something that uh, is really funny and interesting too. It's but fake. anyways. They faked all that. Okay, yeah. so there's a question. I, I'm glad that you invoked that at least. Really. Oh, yeah. I know you're awake, Terrell, so you, you got space, to do, I know you're Space on travel is impossible for human beings now. That's why they have so many theories because science is still in its infancy. But you notice nobody's going back to the moon or Mars or anything because the radiation. It's because Look at of the Terrell, you're almost there. Well, it's, it's because of the radiation. <laughs> it's good because, I, that's, what, that's what they, what they did with the moon landing that. was that they broke Russia trying to race to the moon and they helped the collapse of Russia. It was all disinformation. So um, thank you, brother. So, Terrell, I love um, you, brother. There we go. Bart Sabriel. <laughs> I actually Bart I had him on my show twice already. He's awesome. Well, he, he, he <laughs> his first book that he wrote, I edited for him. We, we're, we're like brothers nice. for a long time. What? He, he wanted me to edit his Moon Man, but I was too busy. I just couldn't do it. That's but, awesome, um, bro. He, but he knows. And, and that's the guy that I'll send you to. So that now my significant other, she asked, she has a question for you. How do you explain the big eclipse is coming up on April, April the 8th, and it's crossing right here at Harrison. And so yeah, yeah. it's big so in the news. So a lot of people are coming eclipses. here. OK, so how do you explain eclipses. whenever the sun, the moon and the earth come into alignment, then you have <laughs> a curvature of the earth that's on the moon <laughs> and vice versa. So I'm wondering how, how do you explain that? First of all, tell your wife I said hello. <laughs> and okay. God bless you, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, so um, now the Bible doesn't explain how the eclipses happen, and I always go back to the Bible, but um, that is what the scientists tell you happens, right? Is, is that the that the sun that the star that the um, the Earth gets in between it? But um, what happens is there's actually an eclipse called the Saturnalia eclipse, and it's there's going to be the Moon and the Sun are both on the horizon, and the Earth is not in between it, and you still have a uh, eclipse over the over the Moon. So I think that's really interesting. So there are cases where the, the earth is not causing that shadow to happen. So if it happens once, it's called the black swan, then then maybe that's not the thing that's causing it. Do I know what causes it? I'm not going to sit here and act like I know what causes the eclipse, but that is what they tell us happens. And that's really quite convenient. What I believe they did is they took what happens in the sky and they, and they, they made a model. Now, who is they? They, to me, would be anything that goes against the Bible, I believe is deception. So I believe the Bible is, uh, you know, it's got, uh, you know, God above the firmament. I believe there's a dome with the moon, sun, and the stars in it. I believe the sun is moving. The moon is moving like the Bible says. Anything that's inverted from what the Bible says is uh, a deception. So I believe that, and I'm no offense to, to what you believe, but I believe the globe, I believe heliocentricity is a, a deception. I know that you're not but our our actual solar system is supposed you know supposedly heliocentric. I know that you you invoke that there's galaxies uh, orbiting the galaxies and and that's all fine and dandy. But um, yeah, so I'm not telling you I know exactly how that happens, and I'm not going to ever do that. But there is some stuff like electromagnets and stuff like that that people try to say. But I, I'm not going to invoke that because I don't know okay. about it too much. Well, for for me and my model, it's very easy. The the moon and the Earth. The moon is orbiting the earth and the earth is orbiting the sun. And when they come into alignment, this kind of thing happens. What's about to happen is the moon passing between the sun and the earth, which it does, but not exactly because it's above and, and below the ecliptic plane. But, but then on the other side, the other type is whenever the earth comes between the sun and the moon. And whenever that happens, then it casts a shadow on the moon and it's round and it's not flat. So then if it was flat, I would expect that there would be, you know, a okay. round and then it would be like a coin turned sideways. Okay. You, you get the edge. And so that really doesn't, it's nonsensical to. to me. Go ahead. So I believe that you're thinking of like the flat earth society, flat earth, where the flat earth is, is, is the earth is going to be flat and all the planets are orbiting still. That's not what's happening uh, on, on the one that most of us believe. Okay. The flat earth society is actually like a shield. So if you take a circle if you take that globe, which is 3650 uh, radius diameter, whatever it is, and you flatten it out, it's going to be like, it's going to be big, right? And there's a dome connected to Antarctica, right? Because Antarctica would be around the flat earth. And you have a, a, a firmament, which is a dome. And the moon, sun, and the stars are in the firmament. Okay, there's not going to be an eclipse because of the, the flat earth gets in, in between the sun and the, and the moon. Because they're going to be inside the firmament like Genesis 1 verses 14 through 19 says. Uh, it says that God put the moon, sun, and the stars in the firmament. So I don't understand what people mean when they when they try to invoke this stuff with flat Earth. It doesn't it doesn't doesn't match up uh, because 
the moon, sun, and the stars are what are moving in the sky. Okay. And maybe the black star is causing the eclipse. How do you not know that? Maybe it's a black star in the firmament uh, getting over the, the, the moon. You, you invoke the black star. What if that's the thing that's blocking the, the, the moon or blocking the sun? You never see the moon coming. And then all of a sudden it goes and eclipses the sun. It's, it's hard to see that. You, all you see is just the sun being eclipsed. But hey, there's a black star. It could be that. Okay, the next question is, how do you explain meteors striking the uh, earth? Meteors. Because okay, they have to come through that firmament. No, they wouldn't have to come through the firmament because the moon, sun, and the stars are in the firmament. That means that it's outside of the moon, sun, stars. So they would not have to come through the firmament. Um, the firmament is outside and 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 are we questioning god i mean is there no firmament is that no, what we're saying no no no. i'm questioning your interpretation oh okay so meteors if you look at meteors or or what they call meteors or falling stars we always see them coming down right we never see them going up you know what you should see on a globe i think that's interesting and um also they they talk about like asteroids hitting the earth and i never see the asteroid all i see is a big hole in the earth right so that could uh that, there's a lot of different interpretations of that but meteors always come down. Now, if you have no, 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 surface, they don't. Every time you see a shooting star, you're seeing a meteor that's passing through the atmosphere. Okay. But it can be going up or down or left or right. It's the ones that so, strike the ground, particularly near you, that appear to be coming down. Well, they appear to be coming down to me. But if there's some that are going up, like maybe like in a meteor shower, you see them going. Doesn't mean they're going up. It's perspective. So if you're looking and you feel like they're coming up like that, they're, they're probably just going, you know, coming. And then they, I don't know if they go down. Maybe they go out. I don't know what they do. But uh, meteors are something that uh, are interesting, but it doesn't it doesn't prove the uh, the globe or the flat earth either way or heliocentricity or geocentricity. OK, um, so let me ask you. Let me ask you a question. Sure. So, and and you said that you maybe do you invoke that there is a firmament? Maybe it's outside of the galaxies, or how? Do, where do you? Where would you place the firmament? The firmament is heaven, just exactly like Scripture says, Genesis one okay. eight. The firmament. So whenever the waters were divided from the waters, the waters above became the heavens. The waters below became the earth. As you were okay. speaking, then I showed those diagrams from my book, The Mystery Explained. So, Excuse me. So Sorry. in in Genesis, uh, uh, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Well. God is the infinite realm. Heaven is the word. Is that's the, if you take those first three witnesses of Genesis one one and roll them out as a tabernacle, then you get the first three verses of John, the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the word. That's heaven. Okay. The word was okay. with was was with God and was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. All things as the earth. And then, yeah. so that's the rolling out of the t the tabernacle. The three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water are God, heaven, and earth. And so the word is heaven. So my father were in heaven, for example. That's where he gets his name. He's a spirit witness of the word. And so the earth, it was perfect. It was one sphere. There were ages that existed. Go to Ecclesiastes 1, start at 9. The ages that existed before us. That's all in Genesis 1, 1. Perfect earth. Everything in this universe was one thing. There were no men, no women, no angels, nothing like that. All were immortal souls. They were all created, and they're all perfect. Nobody ever died. But then the earth, the perfect creation, was made void. Boom! That simulated Adam's murder in the infinite realm. That's what this is all about, the restoration of all things. Adam is this earth. Christ is the last Adam. He's the heaven. That's what's shared okay. in my book, The Mystery Explained. And so whenever the Holy Spirit... The spirit that moved upon the surface of the waters. So the Holy Spirit was taken out of the word. The father overshadowed, Luke 135. And then the son was begotten. The son of God is the begotten son of God of heaven. Okay, now the same process happens with the earth. You have the the uh, the earth that's one round sphere. And then you have a heaven's heaven and earth. The heaven part, the firmament, is the begotten part. That's where the lamb is standing in the middle of the throne right now, in heaven. So there's a heaven of Genesis 1-8. And there's a highest heaven of Genesis 1-1. Okay, so that firmament is a realm. It's where the Lamb is, where the throne is, is where Adam was created in Genesis 2-7. He was a heaven thing. Then Eve was taken out. They're still a heaven thing. When they fell, God put them, the Lord God actually, put them down on the earth. So that's my view of it. So the heaven that's above, it is real, man. It is a realm that's more real than this earth. That's where we're going to go. Whenever the rapture happens, when we meet the Lord in the air, he's going to take us back, and we're going to be all citizens of heaven. The devil's children are going to be chained. 
And then we're going to sit in those heavenly seats and help Elijah on the earth restore all things moving through the day of the Lord that's about to come up. So all that's explained, as I said in my book, The Mystery Explained. So yep. the, the firmament is not necessarily a structure like a dome. It is an entire realm. And whenever you look at Genesis 1, 6 through 8, exactly like the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Word overshadowing, I mean, the Father overshadowing the Holy Spirit, you realize it's the same process. So you have a spirit, you have a body. Where they overlap is the soul. Spirit, blood, and water. Okay, okay, okay so, so that's, that's, the way that, that's the way that I see things. Okay, so Moses, who spoke face to face to God, uh, he's talking about a firmament. And if we go to the Strong's Concordance or the Hebrews, they believe the firmament was a solid dome. Uh, go wait a minute. CJ wait a minute. Bible. Hold on. Well, there's, Hold an, on. there's an incorrection. There's something that needs to be corrected. He never spoke to God. Nobody's ever seen God. He spoke to okay. the Lord God. That's the Lamb okay, of God. Okay, the Lord God would be would be Jesus, right? So the Lamb he's speaking of God. to Jesus. So no. I mean, for me, I know no, you don't invoke. He's the speaking Trinity. to the Lamb of God. The same okay. Lamb of God that's in the center okay. of the throne, that's the Lord God of the Old Testament. Would, would the Lamb of God lie to Moses? No. Okay, good. That's that's what I think so, too. So all I'm saying is this, okay, I'm, I'm just invoking that when, when he's talking about a firmament separated the waters from the waters, these are uh, six literal days, you know? I mean, that's why they say day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six is the way God created the heavens and the earth. And when you sp speak about heaven, there's actually three heavens, right? There's three heavens in the Bible. That's what I believe. I mean, uh, that's going off of uh, uh, Paul saying that he made it to the third heaven where he where he, where he heard unspeakable things that he cannot um, utter. Um, so what I'm saying is the three heavens. One of the heavens would be where the moon, sun, and the stars are located. That's one. Second heaven would be the firmament which is uh, talked about in, um, uh, yeah, Genesis 1-8, excuse me. And then uh, the third heaven would be God's throne. Um, and what I'm, what I'm going to invoke here is, uh, it actually says in Isaiah 66-1, Thus saith the Lord, heaven is my throne, right? And the earth is my footstool. Where is the house where I will build me and where is the place of my rest? Jesus says the same thing in Matthew 5-34. Uh, but thou, but I say to you, unto, what I say to you, do not take an oath at all, either by heaven, nor uh, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is His footstool by the Jerusalem of heaven. So I have that. Um, so think about that. Think about the earth being His footstool, right? And then also we have Isaiah forty twenty two. I kind of already invoked that already. It says it is He, the Most High, who sits above the circle of the earth. And his inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. So it seems to me that the language is God's throne being above the firmament, like I said, in Ezekiel 126 and in Ezekiel 10.1, where Ezekiel's looking up and seeing a, the, the throne or a, a man sitting upon it, right? So we have that. Um, and then Amos 9.6, the one who builds his upper chambers in the heavens and has founded his vaulted dome over the earth. He who calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out on the face of the earth. The Lord is his name. Face is another thing that's pretty interesting because face uh, is like a face of a clock. It's usually flat. You know, even in geometry, face can only be on a flat surface and not be on a curve. But uh, a vaulted dome over the earth, that's interesting that he says that, right? And vaulted dome and the Strong's Concordance says band, binding, cords, bands, thongs, um, vault of heaven, firmament, binding earth to the heavens. And uh, so there's three heavens. I know, and it's speaking of interpretation, when you go over the, the firmament and you go over the heaven and everything, this is definitely some interpretation. I'm going to read exactly what literally what the, what the word of God says. And that's what I'm invoking. And you're invoking like an interpretation, but go ahead. Oh, I didn't hear. I'm sorry. I didn't hear a question that I'm, go I'm going through my diagrams. This is showing the throne of God exactly as you're saying. This is from my book. I just scrolled through the images in my book, The Mystery Explained, and this shows the, the throne of God. This shows God. Yes, the okay, highest heaven. In the highest yep. heaven, right here. Yep. But the Lamb of God is in heaven of Genesis 1 8. And the verse that I was showing you here, because this is very specific. God will, um, but will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, heaven in the highest heaven cannot contain you. This is heaven of Genesis 1 8. This is heaven of Genesis 1 1. And I do see what you're saying in Paul, because he's talking about the air above where the birds fly. Because that's, you know, depending on your perspective, that's a heaven too. But what I'm referring uh, to... Because the, the Bible doesn't refer to that as being a heaven, just letting you know. Okay. So whenever Paul is talking about the third heaven that he's going to, 
then there's a heaven in between, isn't there? So, there is. Yeah. yeah. The, the heaven in between would be the first heaven, biblically, is going to be where the moon, sun, and the stars are located. The second heaven, uh, Genesis 1-8, would be the firmament, which they say in the Strong's Concordance is a solid dome holding the waters above. Okay, and then the third heaven will be God's throne. Uh, Jesus is not in the firmament. The moon, sun, and the stars are in the firmament. Okay, so what I'm saying is inside the firmament. Now, Jesus, if he was in the firmament, there's nothing in the Bible whatsoever that's going to tell you that Jesus is in the firmament. But you could say that God, that Jesus is at the right hand of the Father in the third heaven. And when you talk about uh, Revelation 4, 6, when John goes to heaven and he's talking to the Lamb of God, uh, there's God's throne is up there. And there, he's actually... And he's actually giving you, uh, you know, stuff with uh, with the heavens, right? He's talking about how there's waters and in Revelation, you can hear thunder sound, water sound. There's actually rainbows, sapphire stones. It's really beautiful. But they're in the heavens of heaven where God is located. They're not in the firmament. It doesn't say anywhere in the Bible that Jesus or anybody's in the firmament, but the moon, sun, and the stars. Go to Genesis 14 through 19, and it'll tell you that. Okay. Slow, let me slow you down just a second. Um, Go ahead. The firmament you're talking about, that's the King James translation of, yes. the, of the received text, The which is expanse in the new King James. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. In the New American Standard and the NIV, it says expanse. If you go to the New King James, it still would tell you firmament. That's right. And okay. one is from, firm. Right. It's firmament. Yes. But I'm going to try to slow you down right here. Because ahead, no that problem. firmament, God called the expanse or the firmament heaven. So every yes, time sir. every time that you're saying firmament, I believe you should be, you're characterizing heaven. It says right here, God called the firmament heaven i agree okay so i think whenever you're debating i think you should just call it heaven i think you're go to the cj go to the cjb for me real quick please oh i know it says firmament no no no. go to the cjb which is the complete jewish bible please since you're on here and you will see that uh, god called the firmament or the dome sky okay okay go ahead and go there real quick cjb if i can find that there's a point that i don't it's okay. CJB, I don't want you to lose your point, but CJB, which is which is they are they are adamant about well, going on. back to the Hebrew. This point keeps coming to me and it keeps Oh, I don't want you to lose your Oh, it. okay. Sorry. Well, let me just make a point as I I've studied decades of scriptures for the received text from which the, I respect the, you for Ant, Ant, Antiochian manuscripts versus the older Greek manuscripts and stereoma is what they use for firmament and stereoma is also solid okay in the so Greek. i believe there's a flaw in what you're trying to do because whenever you, you're referring to the strongs i mean that's great i did that for a long time gigantic concordances filled with ink from all this i used to do that when i began my ministry problem is okay. that whenever you're looking up these words you're looking up the root you're looking up the root of the word all those roots have a prefix and a suffix well most of them do you're not actually looking at the use of the term you're looking at the use of the ter- of the root of that particular okay. word, okay? And it says it's used a lot of times. Actually, each of those Hebrew and Greek terms are not used that many times. That root is word. So you have a prefix and a suffix that can change the total meaning of the root. So that's the root word for rakia, which is firmament, is actually raka, which is to spread out, beaten out. So that's the root word. The so word it, rakia. So in order to is- debate this, you actually have to. Take the Hebrew and the prefix and the suffix. Same thing with the Greek. You you can't just say, well, the root means this and then go running with that. You have to use the prefix and the suffix because what does it really mean? You know, that's, um, we, we're talking about righteousness. It but doesn't the, mean But space. the root of the word is it right. It doesn't mean space. It doesn't mean galaxy. No, I'm just, for sure, you, you, just using an example. <laughs> so the root yeah. of the term righteousness, which, you know, it has a suffix on the end and it changes the meaning of right. And so you're looking at the, the root word right and you're you're making you're extrapolating and you're making you're doing your interpretation of things if you're okay. really going to use god's words to dissect and trisect and to be able to come to a conclusion then you you in other words my greek bible that's sitting right here i can see the prefixes and suffixes i can I see- have a guy that's that's a hebrew he's he actually teaches hebrew right he's he's, yeah. he's a jewish guy from israel yeah he came onto my show and I, and I questioned him on everything I'm going over, and I'm not trying to fool anybody. I'm not trying to pull any foolery or anything like that, okay? All I'm telling you guys is 
what the Bible says. And if you go back to the Strong's Concordance, which which people have no problem with pastors going back to the Strong's Concordance when it comes to salvation, when it comes to any of that stuff, going back to the Greek. Um, the Greek, when it comes with the word firmament, it means stereoma, which if you talk to someone that speaks Greek or that 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 studies Greek, it means solid. What people try to use, and also uh, Dr. Michael Heisner, you know, that gentleman is a Greek Hebrew expert, knows, I mean, he has a PhD in it. And he will tell you, not that the earth is flat, but what he will tell you is they're writing from their perspective. That's what he uses. But he shows even on that, that the Hebrew cosmology, even, even if you look up Lagos Bible software, you have Google, look it up. It'll tell you the Hebrew uh, cosmology was a dome with windows in the dome. Because if you look up the flood, you know, we can go into that. But anyways, the CJB, let's read that real quick. Okay. This complete Jewish Bible, because you're invoking that. The firm that the firmament is heaven, and I'm invoking that as well. But if you go to um, uh, the, the you CJB, you pull that up on your side. I'm I, the Greek. Which Bible did you say to uh, use? The CJ, C, CJB, the complete Jewish Bible. So I don't it's know if that's Rashid, an, I don't know is, if that's is an, what it says for Genesis. Is that an option here? C CJB. Fill, oh, here it is, right there. here. Complete Jewish, complete Bible, Jewish Bible, right here. There you go. Okay, but, so but remember, so their... this does not change the Hebrew. This okay, is just somebody say, else's translation. It's the CJB, so complete Jewish Bible. And actually in Genesis 1, uh, in, in mine, it says brashit. So that's actually the, 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 the Hebrew. But anyways, so it says, uh, we well, got six right there, right? God said, let there be a dome in the middle of the water. Let it divide the water from the water. God made the dome and divided the water under the dome from the water above the dome. And it was... And uh, that is how it was. And God said, and God called the dome sky. So there was evening and morning in the second day. So they have sky here. And in our complete, our, we have our uh, uh, King James version. It says called the firmament heaven, right? So the dome is is either, you could say heaven, or if you go back to the, I know you don't like the strong concordance so much, but if you go back, it says vault of heaven. Uh, it says sky, or uh, it's 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 a dome over the earth. That's the way that that Moses believed. That's the way that Isaiah believed. That's the way that Ezekiel believed. That's the way that all these prophets that God came to in a vision, uh, and dreams, and and the Lord. You know, I do agree with that. The Lord came and spoke to Moses face to face and mouth to mouth. So what I take scientists' word for it, or what I take the one that spoke to the Lord, which I believe Jesus is God face-to-face -face or mouth-to-mouth. -mouth. That's what I'm trying to say here. I invoke that, let God be true, every man a liar. You're invoking that science uh, uh, supersedes the Bible in a way. I'm telling you the Bible supersedes what science says. We should filter science through the Bible like you do in some cases. I know you don't like the Big Bang and probably not evolution, but we should do the same thing with cosmology. That's that's what I'm invoking here. Okay. So, first of all, Jesus is the Son of God. The Almighty I, I God, know. God we're is the gonna, one that sent gonna, him to die from gonna, the dead. Well, whenever you say I, I, Jesus is God, that's I'm idolatry. Not, I'm not going to worship the Son of God as God. What do you do with the okay. Almighty? Okay. That that is called that's it, that's a, something that we would have to. That's a whole separate debate. And and honestly, I'm not dogma on the Trinity. It's just so, what I've stu studied so far, and 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 I've studied like really deep on it. I, I mean, not like you, because I think that you've been studying for 30 years, and I'm not going to disrespect any of the your beliefs, you know. And 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 also the Trinity is something I've studied. And at this moment, with all the verses I've read through, I I believe that at the moment, but I'm not dogma on it. But we're not going to. Uh, the Trinity would take another two hours to to debate. And we don't oh no no that. no! It's just we want to stick with the big biblical cosmology and it's, and also your your scientific cosmology if we can. Like we were showing before, God's word is for reproof. I mean, that's what it's here for. And if you say that Jesus is God, and I say Son of God, that's just a simple point. I believe I, he's the Son of God too. But oh, it's he just, is. It, it, I understand. Whether we, whether we believe, whether we believe it or not, he's, John John <laughs> he's looks the son at of God. Him. I I hundred yeah. percent believe but that. That's what he claims to be. That. That's okay. what he claims to be. So either he's the son of God or he's a liar. That's John 10, yeah. verse 36. Yeah, well, either the, the firmament is a, a dome or God's a liar because that's what it, that's what it says. <laughs> I see your point. <laughs> and I, I, I'm, I'm the, grateful it, to be able to debate with you on this because I understand I love more you, about, your, I, about your I point you, now brother. than before. Before I was like, My how in is, the world is I he going to prove that? Here's, here's, the, here's the point, okay? I take the, the Bible 
what for what it says and i don't let anybody because i know that jesus says there's going to be deception in the end times god will strong send strong delusion i don't let anybody mess up with my foundation i stick with the bible i study conspiracy after conspiracy just like you do i study words after word in the bible i study it really deeply and i love it dude i love the bible so much and i know you do too terrell because i could tell by the way you study i love it and i believe that there's nobody that can ever supersede the word of God, because that's what it is. And if you let God be true, every man a liar, all scriptures inspired by God, you let all these things be true. God cannot lie. Um, all, you know, faith is produced by hearing the word of God. Never would I think that God's going to lie, but I always know that atheists, scientists, and scientists are going to try to disprove not only God's cosmology, but disprove God and not need God, naturalism, uh, everything formed, uh, gravity, everything. You don't need a God. That's what they try to do. And you know that. You know, I know you know that. I can tell you know that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we're on the same side of many things. Yes, we and, are. And, and I love you, brother. I really and, do, man. And, and we're... the. What does scripture say? First Corinthians eleven nineteen that there must be factions. There must be factions among us. It doesn't say that there must be factions among us so that those who are approved may become evident. So you give your side, I give my side, and we're not judges. We're participants. So everybody else, <laughs> everybody else gets to decide. And you give if you give you good bait, then you're a winner. And if I give good debate on my side, then I'm a winner. And then everybody and wins because they get to look at yours and mine. And I really believe in my heart that's the way that it is. And I actually believe that each of us see God's wisdom, which is the knowledge and wisdom that's in Christ. We all stand around Christ as if he's a magnificent jewel. And that's the mystery, that which is Christ, Colossians 2.2. 2. That's what Scripture says. Yeah. But here's the deal. You're looking at Christ through a particular facet. I'm looking through a facet. All of our brothers are standing around in a circle looking through their own facet. God reveals himself through Christ in this way so that you must testify and I must testify and all of our brethren must testify. And for me, that becomes the song of the Lamb that from Revelation. There's a song of Moses that's sung by those on the sea of glass. That's the kingdom bride. We are the body of Christ and we're all testifying together. You're testifying. I'm testifying. All of us are. And that's the song of the Lamb. And eventually we earth and heaven are remade and remade and remade and we're more purified and then our testimony becomes like light that just beams into the cosmos and pushes out the darkness so i see see us as tabernacles and we're carrying god's light we're light bearers and so i appreciate your testimony even though we disagree you're looking through a different facet and you what you're really doing is sowing seeds you know first corinthians chapter uh, three start at verse six you know, and it's just right away it says, I'm, I'm nothing. Paul's is nothing. But yeah. it's God that causes the growth. So you sow, you water, I sow, I water. God causes the growth. Fertile hearts, we have fertile hearts. Then the things that you've said that I'm all off on will grow inside of me in time and yeah. vice versa. And I really believe that's the way that it works. And it's, a, it's really, really a great thing. I appreciate you giving us the opportunity to come and debate you on these topics. Yeah. So what I do, uh, Terrell, to be honest, is I take the Bible – and I, and, and I let God create the cosmology. And as I go through the scriptures, this is what I do on a several different shows. I just go verse by verse by verse. And there's several verses that, that agree with uh, 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 a geocentric uh, earth with the moon, sun, and the stars inside of the dome in the firmament, God's thrown above that. And I know that you have, you have that type of thinking, but you're not thinking of it literally. Um, I, I think take it literally. Everything that the, the the Bible is saying, do I take everything in the Bible literally? No, it's gonna the Bible's gonna tell you when to not take it literally. But uh, if you start building a model out of what the Bible says, it gets really beautiful. Terrell, God is closer. He's looking down on us like grasshoppers. He is above the firmament. There's water above the firmament. And uh, you know when we talk about the flood, that's an example. You know, talk about the flood. I believe it's a worldwide flood, just like the Bible says. Uh, I'm not gonna invoke the Book of Enoch. But the book of Enoch says it's an enclosure in 89. Okay, just letting you know. But so there's, let's say there's a fishbowl dome with no hole in the top, but a fishbowl dome with a, you know, and all you have to do is there's three different separate events that happened with the flood. He, he uh, broke the fountains of the great deep, right? So waters came from the bottom. Uh, he opened up the windows of heaven. Water came from the top. And if there's firmament and there's water above, water would come from the top. And also it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. 
And then also, if you keep continue reading, it says that the windows of heaven stopped, or if you look that word, it actually says closed. The fountains of the great deep were closed and it stopped raining. So what happened is that is three separate events that happen. And in my cosmology, with there being a dome, it'd be pretty easy for the flood to happen because all you have to do is just fill it up past Mount St. Helen, whatever the highest elevation would be, and the, and the whole earth would be flooded. When it comes to you having a uh, earth, uh, you know, that you're talking about or orbiting, spinning, and, and I don't know how to interpret the flood on a spinning ball. Maybe it is possible to because God can do anything, but what is, the, what is the windows of heaven on the ball? The fountains of the great deep, what is that on the ball? Also, now raining in 40, 40 days and 40 nights, yeah, that could happen. But I had it rain three days straight here, and it didn't flood Rialto. So how is 40 days and 40 nights going to flood the entire earth? If you have the model that I'm talking about, it's pretty explanatory. Um, I'll go into some more stuff that's pretty explanatory. It fits like a glove, Terrell. Just like when you talk about every eye will see Jesus, every eye will be able to see if the, if the earth is flat and God opens the firmament like a scroll and Jesus comes in on a cloud, every eye will see. Uh, satellites and cell phones, yes, but it says every eye will see. That's that's explainable on a flat earth. It's not explainable on a globe. Only a fourth of the eyes would be able to see on a globe. Okay. So we have... Talk about the flood. That would probably be the best thing to go to. <laughs> okay. So, for example, whenever Elijah went across the Jordan River, he would smack the bank with his mantle and the waters would heap up on each side. Right? So... To understand the flood, the thing to realize is, is that it's what's what is characterized in my work as the Eretz shift. So the earth in Genesis 1 1, Eretz, and it's that is the entire earth. But then Eretz, it's like cosmos of the Greek. It can be the entire universe or it can be a handful of dirt and everything in between. And cosmos includes races and things like that. So what you have with the Eretz shift in Genesis is first you're talking about the entire universe, then you're talking about our local universe, then you're talking about until you get down to the earth and then the land, which is the promised land, which is the land of the garden. Okay, now that land is the land over there in Iraq now, Mesopotamia, it's been, it was, it's been called, that region right there, that's where the races were that were being dealt with, the lineage, the righteous branch, that uh, was Moses, Methuselah, you know, the rest of them. The, that's where they were. And so the flood that took place, took place locally. God heaped the water in that region because God can. Now here's the deal. The kangaroos that were in Australia didn't go on the ark. There's no way that Moses went and traveled and got the kangaroos and put them on the ark. It's impossible, okay, unless he had a spaceship. Or something and there's, there wouldn't be enough room to have two and seven of every animal on the planet anyway but there's plenty of room if you're talking about what's going on there locally so what the seed that had to be dealt with the bad seed of the serpent that was dealt with and the that had infiltrated the righteous branch so that was the goal was destruction of that there were only eight that were righteous and they were floated above the water and so the Lord God controlled all of this if you I did the math on this years ago and with the prevailing wind and the the, the time period that went by, then then, Mo, then Noah would have gone around the planet more than once. Okay, but he ended up in the region that is northeast on the very corner of where the heaping of the water would be. So he, he was still kind of local. So for me, it all makes sense that it was a local flood that took place there, but it was God doing it and he heaped the waters up to destroy the race that was the impure seed. And then he carried on from there. Did not affect the Indians, you know, the Native American Indians. Did not affect the Chinese. Didn't affect other races that were around the world that have been here for hundreds of thousands, even millions of years. I characterize those as six-day people. They evolved from the races of Genesis 120, just like the animals. So you have differences in the races, like the Chinese, for example. Did you know that more than 99% of the Chinese are all RH positive? They have hardly any negative blood. You know, if you're an American and you go to China and you have an accident, there's a chances are there's no negative blood there. And a lot of countries are like that. The, the American Indians are like that. The um, Aborigine people are like that. Well, those people have been here for a long, long, long time. Evolution. So evolution and creation are both true. But uh, we, are, so. we are gods from God's infinite realm. We're here for the purpose of judgment, Hebrews 9, 27. So we're like Adam. 
So at, we were members of Adam's body. We incarnated inside of Adam in God's infinite realm, and we died with him, in him, with the yeah. day that he died. But in the infinite realm, you're a God too. I am too. And we all know each okay. other. We all know so, each other intimately in the infinite realm. We're doing things already done, Ecclesiastes 1 started 9, for judgment. Some of us are perpetrators that work with Satan. Some of us are victims. Oh, is your my brother? daughter. My, my daughter just came down. Oh, okay. yeah, I saw a head pop in there. I go, hey, I was. Wondering, my daughter just came down, trying to stay up. I was yeah, wondering if Jason she... showed up. So, for, for, Quiet, baby. Baby. for for your followers, if you Google my name, Terrell Croft, and you go to any yeah. any topic, there are hundreds and hundreds of articles that I've written back in two thousand four or five, you know, a long time. Any topic, then you can find me on the Bible Debate Forum and ChristianForums dot com and a lot of others on all these topics, six day people and all that. And you can subscribe to my Mystery Report program and the Tutor program down yep. here at tarot03.com. There's a Bible section here. You want to see the two witnesses. I mean, you want to see the differences between the two Gospels. The, and we we need to do a show on this, on the three witnesses of yep. Scripture. So this is the Scripture section. This is where you subscribe. The Mystery Report, just $25 a year. You get access to all the newsletters going back to 2019. They have video report links and things like that. You want to send me your questions, $25 more a year, the tutor program. Everybody that subscribes, you get a copy of my book, The Mystery Explained. The diagrams I've been showing you through this, they're all in there. And they start very simple, and then they get more complicated. And you'll be seeing spirit, blood, water, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and man, woman, seed in the charts. And you'll be able to make the connections, see the patterns. And this is the this book was written in 2005. I wouldn't change anything about it today. It was published in 2017. Yeah. So... so then there's interviews down here, and here's your interview with me from the January yeah. 6th, and this next Thank one will be... putting that up there. Appreciate you. Yeah, right up here, and you're on Substack, too, so there'll be a Substack article, and S I already showed it to you. Let me, I'm having trouble because of this thingy at the top, round rotating sphere. One of these, it's you're the star of the show <laughs> up here, <laughs> and is yeah, it's this one. No, it's the other one. Oh, the debate. Yeah, so this link that I'm making right now to this video is going to go right here, Terrell and Josh Monday. So I'm um I'm doing my best to promote you. I hope you'll promote me and. You know. Oh yeah, this this is going to be pushed actually on the. It's going to be probably pushed on the flat earth flat earth moon sun and zodiac app, and it's going to push this to probably three or four thousand views. That's what happens with uh, Dave Weiss if he if he's going to hear the the. If he hears the debate, which I think he will, shout out to him and that app. If you guys want to look into that, it'll it'll there's and, a lot of biblical cosmology in it. But uh, yeah, it'll be on there and it'll push this to the to the top. And you're That's what sharing got. this on YouTube, is that right? YouTube, Spotify, Apple, all that stuff. It's going to be on all that. And, okay, um, so there's yeah. there's things that I don't say because I know that you're on YouTube. Yeah, so I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, so there's things <laughs> that I don't say it for sure. Yeah, so uh, there are keywords and it's uh, algorithms right. and things like that. So that purposely do that, but I will just show you. Um, um, before you could, I, I get the feeling you're, you're about to cut me off. I mean, you, you're going to have to go, but you guys need to realize there's a terror. The terror cells are about to be activated here in the United States. You need to realize that. So come to my Substack page, and let me just show you this. This is really important. It's happening right now. Um, where's my terror cell? It's Monday. Appreciate your help. Jesus Christ. Seating at the right hand of God. See, there's there's some of this my work here. Where's the terror? Yeah, oh, and right here. You guys know Terrell, Terrell's been studying the Bible for a long time. So, yeah, this is a, this is a yeah, very, a really, really long time. God started and showed me this when I was a teenager. And so... The stage is being set for terror cell activation. That's really, really important. There's also biological weapon activation. I don't want to get into that too much, but you can get that information right here, right here and in the side columns. And I don't, you know, I'm not going to say anything or go into those things, but it's really important to protect yourself from the biological weapon. Everybody's infected and transfected and you get more information right here just by clicking on this link and enough said on that part. Yeah. yeah and, uh, well, yeah, guys, definitely go check out Terrell. Uh, we appreciate him coming on. Uh, he does believe that the moon landing is fake. He believes a lot of stuff that we believe. Uh, the Bible, obviously, he believes, you know, he's got some amazing stuff. So you could check that out. Uh, I'll, I'll, before I end, I, I definitely have to say that um, uh, as far as the flood, I definitely believe it was a worldwide flood. I believe that. Uh, I believe that the Bible says that. And I believe that when God says he'll never flood the earth again, the entire earth, then, you know, there's a meaning to that. Will he never flood Israel again? Is that what he's talking about? But anyways, so we'll keep going. Um, my kids are actually coming downstairs, which they never come.
from at 6 30 i was probably loud too loud or something so okay um so we're actually gonna be ending but um i just want to tell everybody we appreciate everything you guys uh, uh you know do for us for terrell everybody on terrell's side uh nice to meet you again i we appreciate you listening everybody on my side thank you guys so much for listening we love you but we're gonna always end this in prayer uh so we'll do that real quick so father god in the name of jesus thank you for this fruitful conversation uh we really appreciate it we want to ask that you bless terrell and his wife who who is also listening uh thank you so much for for introducing us to terrell uh we will definitely do some more shows lord and uh everything we said today let it be fruitful uh we did plant some seeds if you could please let those seeds be watered um we want to say thank you god so much for your word thank you for us even being able to read your word study your word uh, you know, we got people like Terrell that's been studying your word for, you know, you know, for years, Lord. And I'm trying to be in that same group. I just want to keep studying your word. Please keep me uh, uh, into the Bible, Lord, and keep Terrell into the Bible. And, uh, you know, let us be faithful servants to you, Lord. That will make it the, the best. We just want to make it to heaven and, and never have you say that I never knew you uh don't want Jesus to say he never knew us. OK, we want to make sure that we are known to you, Lord. So we want to do our best. I know that our works are like filthy rags, but we just want to do our best to 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 make you happy we know that it's impossible to please you without faith me and terrell would love to just have the faith you know and uh, your word of god tells us that hearing uh the word of god creates faith so i appreciate everything you do for us lord anybody that's listening out there please uh do me a favor and and study the bible stay intuitive into the bible uh, the bible comes alive when you start finding out definitions here and there so just please everybody stay stay in tune with it and god thank you so much please bless everybody that's listening we love you in jesus name amen all right thank you guys for listening if you could please go subscribe to terrell's uh youtube and also uh, he, he pulled it up there and uh, i'll have it linked below please subscribe to our youtube uh and if you want to check out anything on audio i have it on spotify apple and all the other platforms um thank you guys so much for everything uh, that you guys do for us we love you and God bless you. Recording stopped. And uh, Terrell, I know that yours has not stopped recording yet, but yeah, thank you, man. I appreciate you so much. That was a bless blessing conversation. And I'll send you what the Hebrew cosmology looks like uh, on the Logos Bible app. That way you can kind of see what I'm talking about, okay? Okay, very, very good. Appreciate you very, very much. And thank you again for having me. And you write me whenever you want to schedule again. Yes, we will. And we're already scheduled for uh, 9-11, aren't we? Um, let's see here. I'm looking at the schedule. March 30th. Yeah, we're scheduled already. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's get on the schedule with the mystery explain all these diagrams okay. and things like that. God and the mystery explain and seeing God's wisdom. Maybe we should have done that first, but we haven't got there yet. I think it's really important. <laughs> I think it's really important. So, uh, nine 11 is going to be on March 30th. So when you can work me in, then let's do a mystery explained. Okay. And I didn't, I think you already did a uh, mystery explained on my, on my podcast. Didn't you? The, the last show, or that was oh, different. Oh, you know what? You're right. I think we did. Okay. That was our first show we did. My apologies for that. I've got... I'm no up, problem. Don't, I've got like six <laughs> interviews. Got so many yeah, I six know, interviews so. this I'm month. I'm the same way, dude. <laughs> yeah. Okay, very, very good. So, 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 many shows so, like... so we'll do 9-11. That'll be very interesting. Yes, I agree. And and my daughter is right here trying to bug me. So uh, I love you, brother. I appreciate everything you do man and uh, we'll go ahead and end the interview now hi sweetie and thank you man uh, thank you thank you very much have a great day hey, say hi hi, hi. <laughs> all right you too god bless you B bye bye okay really really good interview i am um, really like josh a lot like jason too i wish jason was there he's funny and um he gives his brother he, he ribs him a little bit when we're doing this this uh, kind of a topic but um let me see i don't record in full screen mode very often and i'm looking for my controls I'm, oh yeah there it is right here okay so it's uh friday i didn't start off giving the date and everything i just started recording and it's right now it's 8 34 a.m we did about an hour look an hour and 33 minutes recording with josh and you can see Josh's heart's really, really in the right place. We disagree on how to use scripture for what it's used for. It's great for doctrine. It's great for, you know, building up the body of Christ, building us, build, build up the new nature that's inside of us. It's a really, really great it's living. It's active. It's like having an AI program, something you can consult. And I just love it a lot. And for me personally, I cannot imagine that, uh, giving you guys my interpretation of God's word and then just 
from that deciding if the world's round, flat, or or anything like that. So for me, I, I'm a scientist also, so I lean, I lean over into the science, and it uh, it all makes perfect sense to me. The eclipses, everything's explained. The um, the cosmos when you look through the telescope and everything like that. So uh, this portion will not be shared on. Oh, yes, it will, too. I'm sure it on my YouTube channel. So I was going to speak about some of the things that I can't share on YouTube, but uh, enough on that. I gave you just a little taste, and everything should be fine. Shouldn't get stricken or banned or whatever for just trying to help people. So I um, appreciate you guys' support very, very much. Without you, there would be no interviews, and no. Uh, I'd be laying brick or something. So... um Appreciate your support again. Get more information right here at tarot03.com. And uh, my next interview with Josh, like he said, is March 30th. My next interview is going to be with Dr. Jason Dean, this fellow right here. That's going to be on the 26th. And we're that's 11 Central. And we're going to be continuing the discussion on, well, what would things that we can't share here. So that's it. Appreciate your support again. Get more information right here at tarot03.com. I'll see you on the next um, mystery report.